This is an episode where I go to my local comic book store, grab my poll for the week, bring them on home, read them up, give you my honest opinion on them, give you reviews and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, like always, there can and will be spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, make sure you back out now. Come back later, check out this video when you're done reading your own books. Or if stick around. I usually read some kind of obscure books a lot of people would not have heard of. And, you know, I like to show people new stuff. See what's out there in the world other than superheroes. <laughs> all right, so first up, The Ballad of Sang, number two. Uh, whoever's been watching my videos knows I picked this up, oh, I don't know, it was a month ago, I guess, today. Um, great story. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Uh, we have our, our little hero here named Sang, and Sang was a trained assassin. When we left him in the last episode, his, his ish, last issue, his master had just been killed, and he was bruised and beaten by the Russian mafia who accused him of doing wrong by them, and they wanted to teach him a lesson. They killed his master, now they're coming after him. But he got away, and now there is a bounty on his head, and they're, he, they've hired like everyone in the city to come after Sang. This lovely woman here named Lucy has taken him in. Oh, and Sang is actually mute. So he cannot speak, so he writes everything, which is kind of cool. And the first group, like I said in last, or the last episode when I did this, this book totally had a warrior's feel to me because you have all these gangs now who are out for Sang. It's kind of cool. The first gang coming out for him is this hair metal band type of motorcycle gang named The Vexed. <laughs> and they're, one of the neat things that I really enjoyed about this is that The Vexed are worried they're going to lose their club and their bar because they're running out of money, so they really need this score. <laughs> I was like, that's actually kind of cool to throw that in there. Really cool. I like the artwork. It's very gritty and dirty. Really, really fits the book. I like it a lot. This was a great story. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, like I said, this is issue two. Issue one, very easy to find. You can go and pick it up. I actually recommend buying this. It's a lot of fun to read, so thumbs up for me. Next up, from IDW, we have The X-Files, Florida Man. Uh, we have Mulder and Scully. Look at this cover. Isn't this cover gorgeous? The cover was done by... Catherine Noted. Never heard of her, but wow, it's actually really good. Extremely lifelike. All the likenesses in the book, though, for Mulder and Scully are pretty much spot on. I mean, it's perfect. You can just tell this is Mulder and Scully. So, the whole storyline is you have Mulder and Scully going to Florida to investigate Florida Man incidents. And what that is are people that are going crazy. And they're just calling them Florida Men. Uh, and they believe it's just tainted bath salts. This dude here just went crazy from tainted bath salts. Now, as far as the story goes, it is cool. I really, I like the concept. It felt like an X-Files book. Things I didn't like about this book was the dialogue felt a little rushed and like they were just like the writer was just trying too hard to make it sound smart and witty like the natural commentary these two always had together in the TV show. It just it felt kind of forced. I will pick up the second issue just to see where it goes. Uh, like I said, I'm liking the story. So, I mean, I, the writing might get to me, and it might drag me down, and I might stop from there, but I do want to give it a second chance. So, um, you know, if you're not a fan of X-Files, I'd say don't bother right now. I will let you know by the second episode, or the second issue. Uh, I keep calling them episodes because, you know, it's the X-Files. Everybody has it from the TV show. Everyone loved X-Files. So, anyway, I'll let you know. Next up, Usagi Yojimbo, number two, The Hidden. And everyone who saw the episode with the first issue of Ballad of Sang also saw this comic as well. Stan Sakai, masterful storyteller. He always, always, always just rocks it. And his artwork is very cartoony, very single lines, but he has a way of just making things stand out. I love this man's artwork. See, there was one page here that just really got to me. It just kind of draws you in like you know you're just looking here and you're reading the dialogue and then he kind of uses these thicker lines just to point out that somebody's watching them over here in this corner and kind of highlight it with different highlights around the wood i just think that's so cool i love stan sakai's artwork and this man's been writing usagi yojimbo for well i don't even know how long i mean he's been around a long time and again usagi yojimbo running around feudal japan 
trying to solve a crime. This one here in particular, uh, we have a, uh, well, we have a man who was murdered and they're trying to figure out who it was and the murderers are leading right directly back to the Shogun. So this is going to be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, the big twist is, is that at this time in uh, feudal Japan, Christianity is outlawed and anyone who is caught being a Christian can be killed and the, the person who was murdered is actually a Christian. So, uh, you know, Stan Sakai is using a little bit of religion in here. So if you don't want religion in your comics, I would say pass on this. But he doesn't throw it in your face. It's actually part of the story. It's supposed to be here. So, you know, I think it's really good. I enjoyed it a lot. So definitely, this is a must-buy. Especially if you haven't read anything by Stan Sakai before, I would really recommend picking it up. The guy's an awesome, awesome storyteller. And next up from Image Comics, we have Skyward. Skyward issue number one. I love this cover. It just, it's just so fanciful. It's just, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> My low G life. <laughs> and this is about gravity just disappearing on Earth and people are now flying away. This is our main character. Her name is Willa. When the book starts out, she is just a baby. Uh, there we go. This is her. It's just a baby. When gravity just disappears on the Earth. And then next panel. It just goes right from one frame of her smiling as a child to 20 years later. And she's actually a courier. They've learned how to get around the city with no, no gravity. Look at this. Can you imagine that? Just the day that gravity left the Earth. <laughs> it's an interesting concept. It was really cool. It's a great story. Like I said, it's very, it's, it's just very fanciful, and it's uh, very also kind of uplifting. And it was just fun. And by the time you get to the end, you know her dad is still with her. She actually lost her mom during the great floating away, <laughs> as I want to call it. Um, and but her dad had said he's actually figured out a way to reverse it. That the world is not supposed to be this way. And he's figured out how to fix it. So and here's the cover for issue two. Gorgeous cover again. I'm actually looking really forward to getting that. Great book. Fun read. It was just, it was enjoyable. I like the groundwork that's being laid out for this story. It's a really unique story. So that was a lot of fun. I'm going to grab this again. I think everybody should grab that. All right. Now, technically, not a new book for this week. I believe this was last... I don't even know when, but I wanted to grab this book because I saw issue two today and I'm like, what? A crow book? I haven't seen a crow book in years. I love The Crow. The Crow is awesome. I love James O'Barr. I love the original Crow story. I've loved several of the stories afterwards. The guy is awesome. And it looks like for the new IDW series, he's handed over the reins. This was a really interesting story to me. Uh, the artwork is also very cool. The artwork, here's our new Crow. His name is David. Now, David is only 16 years old, and he was an altar boy for the Catholic Church in Rome. And there was a terror attack where people were driving through the streets, or someone was driving through the streets and just running people over. And he was in a Catholic procession at the time, and he got run over. And the crow brought him back for revenge. Great, great story. It was really neat. Now, by the end of the book, he does get his revenge. But he doesn't leave, which was kind of interesting to me. He's actually, the, the spirit of the crow is staying with him. And he's not leaving. So, I was actually, whoa, okay. So, this is going to be kind of a little mini-series thing. So, we'll see where this goes. It was a good read. Very interesting. I'm definitely going to pick up more of it. That being said, I grabbed number two, which is what came out today. But I had to read the first one before I can go on to the second one. And well, that's kind of interesting. The cover photo is actually, the cover picture is for a short story that's in the back of the book. That's interesting. Anyway, this is issue number two. And this picks up with David. And it's telling his entire story. Okay, here he is at the end of the last issue, blown in half. <laughs> and he says, he's talking about when you die, that your life flashes before your eyes. And this is his entire story of how he came to be an altar boy in the Catholic Church. 
what led him to this. Uh, this shot here reminded me a lot of John Romita Jr. I don't know why. And eventually, after the explosion, it leads himself to dragging himself over to a roll of duct tape <laughs> and standing up and walking away. Apparently, he still has work to do. Really, really interesting story. It, and like I said, it was also uh, kind of neat to see someone else's take on The Crow other than James O'Barr's. So, good read. A lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Oh, and this backup story, too. The mini series or the little shorts in the back of the book. Each one is really cool. They're only like three pages long. Really self-contained little stories. A lot of fun to read. So, I'm going to be picking this up, continuing until the series is over or the mini series is over. Really good. Definitely worth reading. And next book on our list is X-Men Gold, number 26. This is Till Death Do Us Part, Part 1. And this is leading us into the Kitty Pride and Colossus Wedding, which is just, it's a long time in the making. You know, these two should have been married a long time ago. I love this, that it starts off with her, in the beginning of the book, reminiscing about the first time she met him. It's just so awesome. And then it flashes to current day, and they are hunting down Mesmero. Ha-ha! Now, this portion of the book felt a little rushed. It's like they just wanted to wrap it up nice and neat and tidy. You know, they find Mesmero, put him in the air, punch him, capture him, yada yada. You know, storm blasts him with some lightning to knock him out. Now, this got my attention. This was really cool. Pachow. Looks like Storm got Stormcaster back with the powers of Thor. Look at that. I mean, not all the powers of Thor when she's holding Stormcaster, but she does have some divine power going on now. That is cool. I love seeing that. Rachel over here is actually starting to go a little nuts. Going back to her little hound form. The big points of the book were <laughs> Nightcrawler throwing a bachelor party for Peter. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. So they are in Las Vegas at a bachelor party. But then Peter gets attacked by the AI Sentinel and captured and drug off. For what ends, we do not know until the next issue. Awesome. This was actually a really good read. Like I said, the first couple pages felt a little rushed because it looked like they were just trying to wrap up the whole Mesmero storyline to get into the Peter and Kitty Pride storyline. So I, mean, I figured it probably could have waited another issue or they could have wrapped it up some other way. But hey, it's it works. So not going to complain. It was a good read. It's X-Men Gold. You know, it's one of the better X-Men titles out now. So I would say definitely pick this up. It's good read. Um, you know, and like I said last week, because of the bajillion copies of Action Comics 1000 this week that nobody wanted to compete with. We are having really light on the new comic books. But the one thing you probably didn't see on the list so far is Action Comics 1000, which I had not intended on picking up. I really, I've never read Action Comics. I've never read a single one in my life. And I it was like, okay, you know, 10, 10 different covers, whatever. But then I went to my LCS and my LCS had this. The Jim Lee Tour Edition variant cover. How could you pass? I could not pass this up. It's the Jim Lee Tour variant. Two stores in the entire United States got these. 2,500 copies of this printed. Two stores shared the stock. One of them being Torpedo Comics, my LCS. The other one being Midtown Comics over in New York. Awesome. I mean, I could not. I didn't. Even, I haven't even read this because I figure everyone out there is going to buy this anyway and read it. So I figure I didn't. I didn't want to bother. But damn, look at that. Jim Lee Tour Edition 2018. Woohoo! Beautiful, beautiful book. I actually put this up on my Instagram as soon as I got it, and have been getting a ton of likes on it. As a heads up. Torpedo Comics does have these in stock. So if you're interested in the book, call them up. 
They'll actually take an order right over the phone, ship it directly to your door. And they're actually selling them for cheaper than Midtown Comics. I believe Midtown Comics has them for $35 and Torpedo's got them for $25, if I'm not mistaken. So give them a call. And I believe they charge like 7 bucks shipping, so it's priority mail. So it's like $32 shipped, which is still cheaper than Midtown Comics. So, yeah, awesome. So let's recap our books for the week. We have X-Men Gold. Will you marry me? Good read. A lot of fun. It's X-Men. You can't go wrong. Thumbs up. The Crow, Memento Mori, issues number one and two. Again, really great storyline. Uh, the thing is, The Crow has always been a, a rather spiritual book, and this is still a good take on that, and it was interesting to see a different writer other than James O'Barr taking on The Crow. Good read. I'd say pick it up. Skyward, number one from Image Comics. Like I said, it was a very light-hearted story so far, so it was a, a huge difference compared to what some of these books are that came out this week. It was still a lot of fun. I would definitely pick this up. Usagi Yojimbo, The Hidden, number two of seven. If you've never read anything Stan Sakai, do yourself a favor and just pick it up, or just grab an old trade or something and start there, but you should read something Stan Sakai. And then we have The X-Files, Florida Man, number one. And again, it was X-Files, but it wasn't X-Files at the same time. So you had Mulder and Scully, but the dialogue felt kind of forced. It was okay. If you're not an X-Files fan, don't bother. I will let you know if you should later on down the line. And last but not least from Oni Press, we have The Ballad of Sang. And The Ballad of Sang, great, great story. You have this awesome little ninja assassin kick-ass kid who's going around. And he's just trying to survive and avenge his master at the same time. Serious warriors feel to it because you have all these gangs in New York or, or somewhere. I think they're in New York. It might be a different city. Hunting him down. And it's going to be like, I believe each issue is going to have a different gang trying to take him out. So that's really, really cool. Anyway, definite must buy. And last but not least. Oh, yeah. Look at that cover. Man, that's just beautiful. I believe it's the only variant cover that features the villain for this book on the cover. Man, Action Comics 1000. There it is. 80 years of Superman. So, I told myself I wasn't going to buy one. I ended up getting one anyway. <laughs> so, like I said, if you need one of these, make sure you call Torpedo Comics. They will hook you up. So, I was there this morning and the manager was on the phone nonstop. As soon as I walked in the door, he's on the phone taking an order. And as soon as he hung it up, it would ring again. He'd take another order. Hung it up, ring again. Took another order. By the time I was leaving the store, he was just letting the phone off the hook for a few, like a, like 30 seconds. He's like, okay, I just need a little break. He's like, as soon as I take this off, it's going to ring. And sure as hell, he took it off the hook and man, started ringing right away. So they're selling these fast. So I would say if you want one, make sure you call them up and get it. All right. So these are my books for the week. And these are my opinions. Your mileage may vary. Why did my camera go out of frame there? Oh, there we go, out of focus. Woohoo! So, your mileage may vary. And uh, like always, uh, thank you for watching. To all my current subscribers, you guys are awesome. I'm being, still getting a lot of subscribers every single day. It's absolutely amazing. My subscriber numbers are shooting up. My watch time is shooting up. It seems like everybody's really enjoying my videos. So, I'm glad to hear it. As long as you guys are watching, I'll be putting out new content. So, uh, like always, Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure hit the little green CV over there. See it right there? Pachow. Just click that. It'll subscribe you and then hit the little bell up there. And that'll give you notifications whenever I do new videos or live streams or whatever's going on. And I think there might be a live or a live stream coming up this weekend. Woo. All right. So anyway, thanks again for watching. And uh, like always, take it easy.